That annoying whirring sound. Did you hear it there at the beginning? How did you miss it, right? Typically that means there is a missing belt or a broken belt. And uh, we're gonna dive into this thing and just figure out whether or not that's the case. But this particular VCR is a Mitsubishi HSU 760. And I found this at a thrift store and uh, you know, thankful for thrift stores that provide me with really interesting stuff to show you guys. But this one particularly is really cool because it's super VHS and it has this amazing feature known as perfect tape. So how do we get perfect tape? Well, we'll talk about that here in a moment. Over here on the right, you'll see we have the uh, jog shuttle dial as well as our ability to change the channels. Stop, play, rewind, fast forward, pause, and a little one key program button there. This unit also has VCR plus with a cable channel changer. It has a little infrared emitter, I almost said detector, right here on the top, as you see there at the bottom of your screen. Over here on the front, we have a little door. Behind door number one is a little uh, record level volume control there. We have the perfect tape button, which gets that little mode into action. We have one touch recording and then a remote switch, A and B, in case you wanna buy two of these machines and use them for editing. Behind door number two, we have composite video in, left and right stereo audio, and a daylight savings time button that also doubles as an input button. So, Super VHS, hi-fi stereo sound. This is a Cadillac of VCRs. Let's take a look at the back of this unit and see what's going on there. Moving left to right, we have our antenna in and out. We have a video channel, which is channel three, channel four, or you can just say, no, I'm just gonna use AV. We have uh, S video in, we have a converter box control input, we, or output, we have an edit RCA jack, we have active AV network in and out, video in, audio in, audio out. Actually, we have two audio outs and two video outs. Then we have an S video out and a timer reset button there as well. With the hood removed, we can now go inside the unit and take a look around. So over here, you'll see a gigantic circuit board here on the right as well as another one stacked right next to it. And you got your RF modulator, demodulator going on there. And panning down here a little bit, we've got uh, some other circuitry here. Probably a video processing board that we're looking at right there that uh, pairs up with the video head. And uh, let's see here, we got a uh, circuit board right there. Very good. And then uh, here's your power section over here, rather large power section actually. And now we can actually see what tape was stuck in here. So the tape in here is Wind Talkers. It is a MGM release. And uh, I was hoping it would be a super VHS uh, pre-recorded tape, but uh, probably not. That noise that we're hearing, let's kind of pinpoint where that's coming from. I'll go ahead and hit the power button here on the front. So our capstan is spinning a little bit there. Now what I did notice about this is if I take the bottom plate off of the unit, it is probably not gonna give me access to the chassis inside this thing. But you see that plug right there? More than likely this just unplugs from the main board. There's another plug right there. So we can probably just remove the screws holding this in place and we would just get immediate access to the to the underside of the mechanics of this uh, VCR mechanism here. And there's this little plastic piece here, which is kind of peculiar. It just sits inside of there like that. So uh, very strange, some kind of a shield, I guess, maybe from the heat of the power supply over here on this left side. And there's this interesting looking wheel on the front here, some kind of a balancing wheel that you see right there. So that's uh, rather interesting. Almost, almost looks like an old movie reel. All right, so my next step would be to try and take this chassis out. Let's see if we can do it. 
Well, my first task was to remove the front cover off the front, the bezel, and here is the bezel here, shown on the left of your screen. That bezel is held on with a bunch of clips, and you just kind of have to do them in the right order and pull those little clips off, and then the jog shuttle control knobs just fell off. And here's what she looks like underneath. So we've got uh, that section there, and that section over there behind the jog shuttle control. And as suspected, the chassis does just pull out from the unit, but it took a little while to figure out where the screws all were. Well, two of them were underneath the tape, so I had to somehow maneuver that tape out of there, and the two screws were underneath these two holes right here. And then uh, the other screws that I had to remove, there's one right there, and then there was one right there, and then I believe there's one in the middle. Yeah, there was one down in there as well. So once you remove all of those screws, your chassis, you can just grab a hold of it here, like a handle, and just lift it up out of the system. And looky what we have here. We have an icky, yucky belt that eventually just fell off and is laying inside there. So my next goal would be to go through my belt box and see if I have a belt that'll fit it. Now, where does that belt go? Well, the belt goes between this direct drive spindle here and that little spindle right there. So there's our stretch from there to there. So once we have that belt back in place, I would imagine this thing's gonna come back to life. So let's give that a test. Rummaging through my belt collection, I did happen to find a belt that should be a decent fit. You can see it here. I wish that it had been a little bit thicker than this one actually is, but uh, I think it will work nonetheless. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it around that section there, wrap it around here. It has uh, good elasticity, appears to be moving everything just fine. Now, the problem is I've discovered another belt in here and the belt is right there. Now, as much trouble as it was to take this thing apart, it's probably a good idea to replace this belt here as well. In fact, I'll give it a little test here. If I pull on it, watch how slowly it snaps back in place. So, in fact, it didn't snap back in place at all. So, we should replace this belt as well. And it looks like to get to that belt, whoops, hit the wrong button here. Looks like to get to that belt, we're gonna have to remove some screws. Looks like that one, that one, and that one. So let's give that a try. With our little motor module removed, you can see that the system now has a belt on it, but I didn't have quite the right size of belt. So what did I do? I doubled up a smaller belt and it's uh, actually gonna work, okay? So uh, a little trick you can do if you don't have the right size belt, you can double up on a belt. Now, if this was driving a uh, capstan on a cassette deck, I would not recommend that because you would actually be able to hear the doubling up in there. In this case, it's just turning a mechanism, so we should be fine. So let's go ahead and put that module back into place. And the motor kind of snaps into this section back here. But that uh, tight on space there with that wire. There we go. So that just snaps on there like that. And then of course I have to make sure that my belt doesn't stay underneath there. Now the unique thing about getting this motor out of here was if you just stick something down inside of here, and something down inside of here, it allows it to pop out. So the clips that were holding it in place are right here and right there. Now all I gotta do is put my screws back in. And there we go. Now we should have at least 100,000 more miles out of these belts to keep this thing running. So right here, this one was obviously not working well. That's probably the noise that we were hearing. And then this one, of course, was not doing anything to uh, to rewind or fast forward the tape. You can see this little pendulum type gear right here that rocks back and forth actually does your fast forward and, and your rewind. So uh, here we are, we are ready to go. Let's go ahead and put our chassis back in place and see what happens. Now with the machine put all back together, we're going to test it. Did replacing two belts bring this thing back to life? Let's give it a shot and find out. Here's the tape that was included with it, this wind talkers tape. Let's go ahead and put it in. The tape it died with 
with a tape that it lives again with. And let's see that again, shall we? Hit the eject button. And it appears to be back in business. Very good. Now let's check the picture quality. See how good it is. A little bit of trouble tracking there at first, but uh, it appears to have picked up and done what it was supposed to do. All right, so let's go ahead and hit stop. And let's take another look at the inside here as to what is going on. So you can see the uh, video head is spinning there. And let's do a, do a little rewind action here and see if everything is working on that. And off she goes. Very interesting on-screen display here. It almost has a font associated with it. Very interesting. Not those square letters that we're all used to seeing in the on-screen programming or the on-screen display. It tells me I have two hours remaining on the tape. And it tells me the VCR is rewinding. Let's go ahead and see if we can try the fast forward now. And the way I hit fast forward is just by swinging the jog shuttle all the way to the right. Off she goes. And again, on screen, we see the words fast forward, not actually FFD or FFWD or something like that. That's pretty cool. Now notice the tape stays threaded into the mechanism here and over the video head. And the reason it does that is so that it can do the real-time display on the screen. That's the only way it knows where it is in the tape, minutes and seconds wise, except by reading the control track as the tape is rewinding or fast forwarding, okay? So now let's do a test. For our video recording quality test in Super VHS, I'm gonna break open this Super VHS Pro Fuji compact video cassette, which I will then take and place into this adapter and then place it inside the machine. So here we go. Here's the procedure for putting the smaller S VHS C cassette into this adapter. So we're going to hit this little eject button on the bottom, insert the cassette like this, close it up. And if you'd like to see that again, you can see it uh, close up. Watch the little spindles here at the, at the top as it winds the tape into the cassette shell here. And that's how that works. Now, some of these out there do not have a motor in them. The entire process is completely up to you. You kind of slide something across the bottom there and it does the same thing. But uh, this one happens to work on batteries. Now, how does this machine know that this is a Super VHS tape inside and adjust accordingly? The way it knows is because of that little hole right there on the bottom of this adapter. A similar hole you will see on the bottom of a Super VHS full-size cassette as well. Okay, so now let's put a DVD player up to hook one up to this machine and we will make a little test recording using the perfect tape system to make sure we actually get a perfect tape. To record on our Super VHS tape, we're going to use a really super source, which is a DVD player, and we're going to use this demonstration disc. This is DVD, and it's a Sony DVD demonstration. You can see it in its entirety on my channel. Just Google it. And to bring the best source material into the machine, the best quality, we're going to use the S-Video output on this DVD player and use an S-Video cable, which you see right here. Okay, so plug that in and notice I have the composite video disconnected. So just to be sure that we're using the source that we want. All right, next step, 
All right, this is the first time I've tried this. We're going to try it together. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my Super VHS tape. Of course, part of an adapter there. And there's a little S flashing right here, right next to Super VHS. I don't think you can see that due to the display being fairly dim for its age. And look what's happening up on the screen. Perfect tape, testing the tape. Ooh, your tape is rated excellent. Your VCR, VCR is now set to make the best recording possible. Pretty sweet, huh? I didn't even have to hit the button. So what happens if I do hit the button? Let's see if I hit the perfect tape button here on the front. Okay, now it says perfect tape off. So if I turn it back on, perfect tape is on. And here we go, we're gonna make our perfect recording. So I'll go ahead and put the DVD in. And I believe this DVD auto starts because it is a, like a store demo. And I'll go ahead and hit record on the front here. So I'm recording an SP. So you've heard about DVD. Have you seen DVD? Well, this is DVD. Well, apparently this particular DVD has macrovision on it, it which is causing the uh, video quality to be kind of crappy. That's weird. Why would somebody put macrovision on this particular tape? Or this particular DVD. That's weird. Well, we're not going to make a perfect tape if the DVD has macrovision on it. You'll see these little bars appear on the screen in the middle of your screen for just a short second once I hit the play button. Here we go. Ready? Do you see them? The little uh, parallelograms that appeared there on the on the screen, and there they were again. And this is what the quality of the of the tape looks like. So we're going to have to find a DVD that does not have macrovision on it. Here's a little DVD I put together. It is the D Theater demonstration that I transferred from the original D Theater DVHS demonstration tape burned it onto this DVD-R and even burned the graphics onto the disc as well. I don't think I have the DVD recorder anymore that does that. Oh, look at there. We got uh, DVHS, we've got a Laserdisc demo, and we've got a uh, DiscoVision demo going on there. So let's go ahead and hit play. And then I'll go ahead and hit record because I think it's going to give me quite a bit of leader here it actually starts. So I am recording now, writing an index. This cassette can only be played back on DVHS VCRs bearing the D Theater logo. VHS has evolved digitally. A high definition video format I think Techmoan did a video on DVHS, very thorough background look at that. You might want to check that out. So yes, VHS actually had a digital version. Insane, right? Absolutely insane. All right, so I'm making my recording now. The next thing I want to show you is what this recording looked like at the end after we made our cassette. How does our Super VHS test tape look? Let's check it and see. VHS has evolved digitally a high-definition video format that far surpasses standard TV images has now arrived. DVHS, the video format that allows high-definition images to be digitally recorded and played back in the age of digital television. Bring the theater to the home. It all it begins, all begins here. here. A visual experience meant for this new century.
because now there is a new pre-recorded software platform that takes maximum advantage of the superior characteristics of DVHS. It's called D-Theater. D-Theater was developed for playback of high-definition, copy-protected DVHS pre-recorded software, such as HD movies and other high-quality content. It's the closest thing to the original, and Hollywood loves it. D-Theater software can be played back only on VCRs bearing the D-Theater logo mark. This will conclude this video here on the DataBits channel about this Mitsubishi Super VHS VCR. Please subscribe to the channel to see more updates and more cool stuff as it is found and repaired and demonstrated for you. You can also look on my channel and see other great videos about VCRs. They actually are quite popular on my channel. So please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave some comments below. I do appreciate you joining me today, and hopefully we will see you on the next video. And watch a couple of these videos that you see here on the screen as well. I highly recommend them. And we'll see you next time.